Hello, everybody. This is Rick Manning, President of Americans for Limited Government. And boy, oh boy, you know, what a weekend it, it's been for uh, President Joe Biden. Um, you know, for those of you who have been following this, obviously Joe Biden's uh, now trapped, kind of hoisting his own petard with a bunch of uh, a bunch of classified records that keep showing up all over his house and his uh, former office. None of the places they were supposed to be. And amazingly, amazingly, the Ar National Archives, which have been bedeviling President Trump over every piece of paper, uh, apparently didn't ha have any knowledge that uh, there were all these classified documents were missing, let alone other documents, which we don't know how many were not there. Um, all I know is National Archives was willing to go to court uh, with President Trump to try to get his. Apparently didn't care about Obama's, Obama's records, uh, which because remember, these were not Joe Biden's records. These were, were President Obama's records because Joe Biden didn't have records. He was not able to classify stuff. He was supposed to be able to. And so if he had classified documents, those were not his, those were not his records. Those were records of the Obama administration. And that is a big problem for Joe. So let's talk about a little bit about it. First, I want to I want you to see this uh, press clip. If you haven't seen it, it's Peter Ducey um, asking Joe Biden about um, him having classified doc documents. Um, David. So God bless God you bless all, you and all, may God, God protect, protect our, our troops. Mr. President, 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 Mr.
is really better informed than a factory worker in Pyongyang, North Korea? Probably not. Both have been effectively blindfolded by information monopolies. And if you doubt that's true, ask your neighbors who's winning the war in Ukraine. And of course, they'll tell you that Ukraine is winning. Duh. That's what they've seen on the Today Show every morning for the past 11 months. And not just on the Today Show, but on virtually every media outlet in America, apart from Colonel Doug McGregor's appearances on this show, for which he has, needless to say, been condemned as an agent of Putin. But he's pretty much alone. Here's the version that most Americans see. President Zelensky described the time as the beginning of the end of the war. Does he have that right? Well, I think it's clear that Ukraine is winning. The Ukrainians are on the offensive. They're winning this war right now. Why would you want to stop supporting the Ukrainians when they are winning on the battlefield? Ukraine is winning, but they haven't won, and Russia is losing, but they have not lost. Right now, I think it's fair to say Ukraine has the upper hand. Ukraine is winning its war thanks to the enormous support we and, and others have provided, and we need to keep the pressure on Putin. Well, that was just last month. I think it's clear that Ukraine is winning, says defense contractor Barry McCaffrey, with what sounds like hard-earned authority. Ukraine is winning, says Michael McFall of Stanford University. Ukraine is winning, says Hillary it's Clinton. Winning. Ukraine is winning, winning proclaimed the entire American media establishment. And anyone who suggests otherwise must be working for Russia. That's what they've been telling you relentlessly because they want you to think we're on the winning team. And most Americans believe them because how could they know otherwise? They don't have sources in. Yeah, well, what you just saw there is, is a great piece on media misinformation, um, but it wasn't the piece on the raid on the on the Mar-a-Lago that I'd hoped it would be, but um, media misinformation is a big deal. And the fact of the matter is when it comes to this, uh, the classified documents, the misinformation is pretty clear. You know, the the attempt is to try to say that the that President Trump is different than Biden because President Trump had documents at Mar-a-Lago and they weren't in, they supposedly weren't in locked and contained environments. That's just factually not true. Um, the difference here is, is Joe Biden had documents all over all over Delaware and in on storage areas in D.C., um, the Penn Biden Center was a store. He was basically his office that was a storage area. He had it in his home in Delaware, which in 2017 and 2018, Hunter Biden said he owned. That's right. Joe Biden, according to Hunter Biden, he said he owned that home, but he was paying $50,000 a month in, in rental income, rents, rents and, and payments uh, to his dad to his family, to live in this home. It was unclear. He, he checked rent on one side, but he said on another side, of, on a form which Hunter Biden filled out, he said he owned it. So we have a home that's that Joe Biden's being paid $50,000 a month for, one way or the other. Uh, Hunter Biden said it, was, said it was rent on his form. Um, Joe Biden said they still own the home on his, the forms he's required to file. Um, but one thing Joe Biden didn't do was say anything about who, wh whether or not he was receiving rent money. In fact, his IRS filings, his taxes, ta the taxes he filed, show no rental income on that property, zero, zip. Don't think you'd forget $50,000 a month, but I guess in the big finance world of Joe Biden, you do. Um, so point being, and, and where I wanted this to go was, you know, we remember, Remember the pictures of the FBI raiding Mar-a-Lago, unprecedented raid on a former president's home. They raided Mar-a-Lago in search of confidential documents, confidential documents that, that President Trump's lawyers had been negotiating with the National Archives over. And guess what? Documents that were in a safe room set up for set exactly that purpose. It was a skiff. So they had a safe room for the documents so somebody could go in and review the documents without it being exposed to the outside. You know, they they looked in Melania's underwear drawer, they couldn't find it there. They looked in Barron's room, couldn't find any there. So what do you have? You have Joe Biden keeping the keeping confidential documents out by the Corvette. Of course, the garage door is locked. And, he, and you've got, you know, President Trump keeping them in a secure facility, as Mar-a-Lago is, um, with Secret Service and in an area that is a safe room that is actually 
controlled by the Secret Service. So, and yet President Trump gets the FBI raid. Well, you know what didn't happen? What didn't happen is President Trump's attorneys didn't get to go over, didn't get to go over the uh, um, the documents in advance, decide which ones they were gonna give the FBI, which ones they weren't, which ones were appropriate. No, we saw President Trump having, when he had his office, his house raided, we saw Time Magazine covers that were that were uh, behind glass, that had been framed being taken out. We saw a lot of personal effects being taken out. Yet, that's how the, F, that's how the FBI raids Donald Trump for, for Joe Biden. Oh, well, you know, hey, Joe, just get him back to us whenever you can. You know, it's no big deal. Uh, no raids on Biden's uh, home, even though structurally, even though from a legal standpoint, Joe Biden was directly violating the law and Donald Trump had every right to have those documents. That's the, that's the fundamental difference between being a vice president and being a president. Remember, Joe Biden wasn't president. He was a vice president. He had no right to have those documents outside of a controlled environment. And those documents are set up so people can go in and they're writing a book. They can they can go review those documents. That can That's legal. That, that's the way it's set up. But you're not allowed to have them at home. You're not allowed to have them in your library. You're sure as heck not allowed to have them in your garage. So let's uh, go to uh, the next clip. But I know... There have been questions about my email, so I want to address that directly. When I got to work as Secretary of State, I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department, because I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. The vast majority of my work emails went to government employees at their government addresses, which meant they were captured and preserved immediately on the system at the State Department. No one wants their personal emails made public, and I think most people understand that and respect that privacy. I took the unprecedented step of asking that the State Department make all my work-related emails public for everyone to see. In Going through the emails, um, there were over 60,000 in total sent and received. About half were work-related and went to the State Department, um, and about half were personal. Uh, and I feel like once uh, the American public begins to see the emails, uh, they will have an unprecedented insight into uh, a high government officials uh, daily communications, which I think will be uh, quite uh, interesting. I have uh, absolute confidence that everything that could be in any way uh, connected to work is now in the possession of the uh, State Department. And I have to add, even if I'd had two devices, uh, which is obviously permitted, many people do that, you would still have to put the responsibility where it belongs, which is on the official. My direction to uh, uh, conduct the thorough investigation was to err on the side of providing anything uh, that could be possibly uh, viewed as work-related. That doesn't mean they will be by the State Department once the State Department goes through them. The system we used was set up for um, President Clinton's office, and it had numerous safe. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to stop right there because I wanted you to notice something. The emails that we provided. No, the FBI didn't go into Hillary Clinton and grab the server, grab the server that was in Denver, in an unsecure location. No, they didn't do that. No, they didn't go and grab all grab all the electronic devices. No, they didn't do that. You know, what we found is that we ended up with a bunch of electronic devices smashed and uh, and beach bled or bit bleached um, to wipe them out. And you had to have forensic FBI forensic analysis to trying to go back and find the reconstruct data. We know, but the main thing here is Hillary Clinton says that her we provided the you know the information that they went through it. Her attorneys, remember this. Her attorneys 
sifted through 60,000 emails and said, oh, there's about 30,000 that are, that are responsive. And you know, so we're going to give you those 30,000. Of those, a number of them were classified. But think about this. Did the FBI go in and bust down doors and you know, to collect this data so that, so that uh, devices couldn't be destroyed? Nope. Did the FBI take aggressive measures to try to secure the, the server where all these documents went through? Nope. And the last part of it is, if you believe that Hillary Clinton was only emailing, I mean, this is hard to imagine, but I guess Hillary Clinton never emailed a foreign official, never emailed you know, anybody who was not um, her yoga instructor or State Department employees. Now, it seems rather unbelievable to me, but that's what she contended. Um, and yet, Hillary Clinton walks free and has never been charged with violating the statutes that any other person who did exactly what she did would have been charged with. Not once. No raids. You're all free. Way to go, Hillary. Good job. You got away with it. And now these people who have such disregard for the rules are trying to nitpick Donald Trump because, because, you know, Donald Trump never really, you know, he couldn't be accepted as being president. The election deniers from 2016 who spent three years saying the Russians did it and another year saying that we had to have investigate Ukraine before we got Joe Biden into, into office so we can get us to war in Ukraine. Those people, those people are the ones who are sitting there saying, oh, we have to be, we have to have Donald Trump have a special prosecutor. We have a special counsel. Now they have filed it and put a special counsel in on Joe Biden. Um, but the truth is there's a, there's a big difference between what Joe Biden did and Donald Trump did. And everybody knows it. Everybody who knows the law knows it. And they can sit there and they can wave their hands and dismiss and say, this is no big deal, all they want. The fact is, Joe Biden broke the law. Plain, simple, broke the law. Will, will his special counsel do anything? Who knows? What we do know is this. For the first time, Joe Biden, in the last six years, has been facing actual scrutiny for his actions. He wasn't fa he didn't face scrutiny in the in the Trump or in, in the Obama administration. The guy went to Ukraine six times in the last week and a half of his when he was in office, January you know, ten to twenty of twenty seventeen when Donald Trump was coming into office. Joe Biden managed to make it to make a speech at Davos, the World Economic Forum, and he made, got, managed to make a speech. He managed to go to Ukraine one final time. Gee, what was so urgent that you had to go to Ukraine one final time while well, you couldn't get your papers in order to make sure you didn't card off a bunch of classified documents? I wonder. I wonder. Because remember, Donald Trump got into trouble simply by asking the president of Ukraine to try to figure out what the heck was going on um, with the uh, with all the with everything that had been rumored to have emanated out of Ukraine related to the Russia conspiracy, you know, conspiracy. So folks, that's the tale of two, tale of two politicians, tale of three politicians. Hillary Clinton, who was untouchable and could not, would not be subjected to raids and the like. Joe Biden, who is now, you know, able to have his attorneys go through everything. And did, I don't know that his attorneys are, have a, uh, top secret clearances are able to go through everything. And if they find a you know, classified documents, oh, well, here you, you know, we're turning them in. No FBI, no law enforcement officials, just his attorneys whose job is to protect him. And then you have Donald Trump who had, a, had a, an unprecedented raid of his home to gather information and to basically do a, a sweep of his home to try to find anything they could find that he might have done wrong. So that's the that's the environment we're in. But let's focus now on 
Joe Biden, because I did title this Joe Biden's in trouble. Joe Biden's in trouble with the IRS. If Joe Biden did not, did not file and, and claim $50,000 a month on his tax forms that he was receiving from his son, Hunter Biden, and it does, and his tax forms do not show that he did, then he underfiled by about $600,000 of income. $600,000 of income, he underfiled. It's not a complicated form. I mean, it's in TurboTax. It's not like he, this isn't complicated corporate law, you know, the corporate tax law. This is TurboTax. The records show that he did not file that. Interestingly, where, remember, Joe Biden, when he was all upset that Donald Trump wasn't putting out his tax returns, uh, released his tax returns very proudly, and they were up on the web. And you could get those tax returns until about a week ago, week ago when it came out that Hunter Biden had claimed that he, he was uh, receiving or paying $50,000, 49000 and change um, for rent on the Wilmington property that had the garage, which had the Corvette, which had the, which had the uh, um, classified documents. So all this stuff, all this classified documents, all the, all this stuff we've seen going on, fact is the real liability, just like with Al Capone, Al Capone didn't get busted for killing a bunch of people. He didn't get busted for running a massive bootlegging, you know, alcohol operation. No, he got busted on tax fraud. Tax fraud's easy to choose, easy to see, easy to prove. And this is tax fraud. Now, Joe can, he can go back and, you know, amend his taxes and say, oh, I forgot. I forgot that $600,000 I got paid by my son to stay at a property where the rents are about $7,000 a month. Um, yeah, you can say that. Um, but the bigger issue and the reason he won't is because when you look at the Hunter Biden laptop and you know that the big guy was getting, Hunter Biden was complaining about paying the big guy. Sure looks like a, it looks like a cash wash operation to me. Wash it through the property, claim it, claim it's a rental and send it along, um, as a way to, to wash it. It's just Joe wasn't smart enough to actually claim it on his taxes. And if he had, well, then people would have been asking these questions before the election. So maybe he was smart. So folks, that's where we are. Um, go ahead and play the uh, play the Jesse Waters thing, David. Gronk speaking. Great news, Gronk. You're gonna be in the FanDuel Super Bowl commercial. So I just lift up my phone and say, new FanDuel customer. There you go, FanDuel. You ever been in a rush to get somewhere and you forgot something? Maybe you're running late to work. You leave your lunch right out on the counter. Maybe you're so excited to go on vacation you forgot something big. Did you close the garage? That's it. I forgot to close the garage. That's it. No, that's not it. What else can we be forgetting? Kevin! And when you're in a rush, sometimes you forget what you pack. And that's been Joe Biden's excuse for stealing highly classified documents. Believe it or not, the White House is telling CNN Joe broke the law because he was in a rush. He had trips planned on the last week of his vice presidency. Joe was flying out to Davos where he was meeting his bud, Chinese President Xi Jinping. I guess Xi couldn't make it to the foothills of the Himalayas. Joe even flew out to Ukraine to meet the Ukrainian president. What was the big guy doing in Ukraine the week before Trump's inauguration? While Hunter was raking in 80 grand a month from working there? That's the million dollar question. So since Joe was too busy planning his getaway, he had his aides scrambling late night to get him all packed up and out of there. So no wonder Joe was surprised when he opened up the garage one day and saw intel briefings on Ukraine, Iran, Great Britain, lodged right beneath the Corvette. 
Joe didn't think twice. There's no place safer than his Corvette. It's protected by a garage door. But no one seems to know how they got there. Joe doesn't know. His staffers don't know. Does the binder know? I would refer you to the Department of Justice. I'm going to refer you to the Department of Justice. For, uh, I would refer you to the Department of Justice. I would refer you to the Department of Justice. We're going to refer you to the Department of Justice. I would refer you to the Department of Justice. The binder only referred us to the Department of Justice 20 other times. So we took the binder's suggestion and we emailed the Department of Justice for some answers. We asked how those documents wind up in Joe's garage. Did anyone besides Joe have access to the docs besides Hunter and his Chinese secretary? Surprise, they actually answered us. Told us, quote, the department declines to comment. But don't <laughs> worry, some in Washington do have the answer. I'm suspicious of the timing of it. I'm, I'm also aware of the fact that things can be planted on people. P places and things can be planted. Um, or things, things can be planted in places uh, and then discovered conveniently. It was obviously Trump who planted the boxes before he was sworn in. They want us to believe this whole thing was just an accident. President Biden had classified documents in his Wilmington garage um, is just breaking. Do you think that's irresponsible and reckless of him? It's irresponsible is to not disclose when you have documents. He has certainly done that. Biden people are bringing forth the documents. They're not obstructing access to them or knowledge about them. Why did he not inform the American public two months ago? Do you think that was a mistake? Well, I don't know what you're saying. Right she doesn't know what she's saying. It was an accident. Give him a break. The Corvette was like Kit from Knight Rider. It would just run over any spy who tried to compromise the garage. Are we supposed to believe that when we know Joe's been sloppy his whole life? The Biden's Delaware home has had a history of security failures. Joe's security system was malfunctioning so badly in 2015 when he was vice president that the Secret Service just shut it off for months. Just shut it off. They even shut off his security cameras. They call that pulling a Paul Pelosi. Can you imagine how many people could have just walked in and out of the vice president's house? But Joe said he wasn't worried at all by his faulty security. And if he wasn't worried when he was vice president, do you think the Secret Service finally fixed it when he was a private citizen? Has anybody done any background checks on Biden's landscapers? Who's that guy right there? Is that Joe's arborist? Does that landscaper look Russian to you? <clears throat> Maybe Joe kept him a little more secured in his library. Let's take a look. Look at this right here. Joe had files scattered next to the window. I mean, that's where I would keep my classified docs, next to a window. Forget the locked filing cabinet. You know the spies will look there. They'll never think you'll keep them sitting out on the windowsill. Whatever, the Corvette's like right there. Those things are safe. Joe's documents were spread eagle ready for the taking. But Joe being careless with the docs isn't even the biggest scandal. Hunter has his fingerprints all over this. He was telling people he owned the house where Joe stored away his secrets. Claimed he was also paying 50 grand a month in rent. Why was a 50 year old man living at his parents' house where he was stuffing his classified documents? And wait a second, if Hunter could afford 50 grand a month in rent, why was he staying with the big guy? The big guy was charging his son 50 grand a month in rent? Wait a second. Is this how Hunter was funneling foreign money into his dad's pockets? Through rent payments? Did we just find the smoking gun that's going to take down the Biden crime family? I don't know. Now, we're finding Joe's assistant who packed his bags for him, Kathy Chung was hired after Hunter recommended her. Hey, Dad, I know this Kathy Chung. Trust me, she'll be really good. Don't ask questions. Ms. Chung was so thankful that Hunter got her a job at the White House that she was even sending Hunter phone numbers of Democrats like Crooked, Slick Willie, Nancy. But the bigger scandal is Ms. Chung was setting up appointments with Joe and Amy Gutman. Who's Amy Gutman? Well, she's the president of UPenn. You know the school China funneled money to Joe through? 
You know, the Penn Biden Center, the Chinese-funded think tank, where the first batch of Biden documents were found stuffed in a closet? And Ms. Chung was inviting Hunter to join Joe Biden and the UPenn president to a meeting. Wait, Hunter even canceled a meeting with the prime minister of the Ivory Coast saying, quote, the Gutman meeting is a must attend for me per dad. Why would Joe Biden make it mandatory for Hunter to be in a meeting with the UPenn president about their Chinese funded think tank? And why was Hunter meeting with the president of the Ivory Coast? We don't even have time for that tonight. And as soon as Joe's vice presidency was over, Ms. Chung packed up Joe's boxes with classified docs. And Hunter tells Ms. Chung to come work for him again, even gave her an office with a water view. Ms. Chung, very popular with the Bidens, just getting passed around all over the place. The funny thing about Ms. Chung is that she's been working in D.C. for over a decade. And there are no pictures of her anywhere. Can't find them. Who is this Ms. Chung? Why was she handling these classified documents and moving them all around the mid-Atlantic coast? Was Hunter's Fang Fang jealous of Ms. Chung? You remember Jackie Bao, Hunter's assistant who worked for the Biden campaign? Was Jackie Bao at Joe Biden's house? Remember, Biden campaigned from the basement of that house. Is the FBI brushing the documents for fingerprints? Joe should have taken the Hillary tack, just lit the box on fire. Do you think anything's coming from this? You can't indict a sitting president for crimes he committed as a private citizen. So this whole thing's just going to be a big pain in the butt for Biden. Make him look really stupid, sloppy, dishonest, which he is. But for the first time in a long time, there's blood in the water. Yeah, it's a... Um... Uh, we played the whole thing because I thought it was important that you you see the whole thing. But yeah, that's the, I, I think the point you made at the end is the expectation that Joe Biden's going to end up go down going down. I don't I don't know that he's going to. What I do know is this: um, we now have, unlike scandal after scandal in the Obama administration, which the media ignored, um, we have. Uh, unlike other scandals in the Biden administration, the Hunter Biden laptop, which, you know, the media is still denying has any relevance. Um, this is one the media is covering. And the a reasonable person would say, why, why are they covering this and why now? And the answer is obvious. Joe Biden's out used his usefulness they don't necessarily want him to be replaced. That's dangerous for them. That's That may be a bridge too far. They just want to make sure he isn't the candidate in 2024 because they have people, and I'm talking, somebody's leaking this, okay? Somebody's leaking this information. So they, we've seen real, real information, the mainstream media, I, I hate call them the establishment media, hasn't reported on it, refuses to report on it. We see what the manipulation has been done through Twitter with the Twitter files by our intelligence services. So I ask, who, who has given the okay to cut, to cut up Joe Biden on this issue? to make it so it puts him in peril, to send a message that he's not immune anymore. And when you start thinking about who, you know, I'm not, I don't know who that is, but I can tell you this, when I was asked about the intelligence agencies, and if I felt good about the special counsel being put on Biden um, as being equitable related to, since Trump had a special counsel on him, the answer was no, because if the same people who spent four years attempting to disrupt and destroy the Trump presidency and were engaged in trying to ensure, put the thumb on the scale to ensure Trump was not reelected in 2020, if those same people are now releasing information on Joe Biden, that's as dangerous when they're doing it against Joe Biden, as it is when they were doing it against Donald Trump.
because you and I don't know who they are. But so, but this is dangerous when our intelligence communities appear to be behind the choosing of the president, and when a president when a president outlives his usefulness, the ending of a presidency. That's dangerous. It's un-American, and we have to get to the bottom of it. That's why these investigations matter. So we have to clean out, clean out the corral because there's a, the cows have left a lot on the ground and it's, and it's now beginning to be dangerous. This is Rick Manning, President of America's for Limited Government. We will keep you apprised of what's going on and we will talk to you tomorrow. Take care.